Museum of Design Atlanta's lecture series, Design Conversations, brings important books, speakers, and ideas to audiences worldwide. In this segment, Atlanta designer David Lawfer offers aha moments from his new book, Dialogues with Creative Legends. Paul Rand was sort of a, a, a rock star's rock star in the design profession in, in the last century. Um, his phone number was unlisted. Uh, several people said, you ought to call on Paul Rand. And I said, how? You know, we, we knew that he was around, we saw his work, but you couldn't just pick up the phone and call him. He worked by himself. So anyway, N Nelson, who knew, uh, knew everything, had his, had his information, gave me a, so I reread this letter a couple times, and finally I, got, I was able to part with it and put it in the mailbox. And about a week later, I get a phone call. This voice, no, no introduction, sounds kind of military. I said, uh, Mr. Lawfer, Mr. Rand will be in the uh, Manhattan office. Uh, he can see you next Thursday at 10.30 for 20 minutes. Uh, he didn't care if I could be there or not. He was just telling me that, that Rand was going to be there. So I asked, uh, you know, how do I pass security? And they said, just tell him you're here to see Paul Rand. And so at, at IBM, Paul Rand's name was a security clearance. So, um, so I, I went in uh, and um, for, first I thought, well, I better bone up. So I, I looked at some magazines and then I called a friend who, had, uh, who I'd gone to school with at Carnegie Mellon, but who went on to study under Rand at Yale, Jeff Freed. So Jeff said, well, um, Rand uh, has definite opinions about everything in design and his opinions are never wrong. Uh, he, said, he said, you'll learn the most from him if you ask about his decisions. He said, you have to understand that, that he thinks that there's a right way to do everything in design and that he alone knows it. So that sort of set the stage and I, 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 uh, he, he kind of came in like an impresario on stage. He's, he's a very short man um, and I kind of stayed seated because I didn't want to <laughs> tower over him because I was afraid of what that might mean. But, uh, but he was very relaxed and businesslike, and um, he, he said, well, I have 20 minutes, how do we want to spend our time together? And I said, well, you know, I, I brought a portfolio and I'd love to have your opinions on it, but what I really want to know is how you, and he said, became Rand? <laughs> and I, I said, yes, that's what I want to know. I, and then it hit me right away, he must get that question all the time from, from kids like me. So. Uh, so he said, well, you know, I publish. Uh, he said, I didn't really have a grand plan for this profession. I, I was working for a guy and he stopped paying me. So I had to get a job in an agency and I didn't really like it there. And so I learned as much as I could about advertising in five weeks and then I left. And he said, I'm too opinionated to make a tolerable employee. He did the IBM logo, which is uh, probably one of the most copied and impossible to copy brand marks in, uh, in all of business. Um, he could be very um, doctrinaire and serious, and he, could, he also had a very uh, light, whimsical streak about him, even, even working for IBM. So he, he started flipping through my portfolio, and he came to one piece that I, I did an identity program for my employer, Oxford University Press, for their 500th anniversary. I was very proud of it. He looked at it, he said, hmm, Optima, bad choice for a font, for a bad font choice for a, for a design uh, for a program, for a, for a and I, my, my boss at Oxford liked Optima and we used it all the time. So, so I started to say, well, you know, it's so classical in its origins. He, he would have none of it. He said, I already said I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, he, so, they, so, you know, he flipped on and he came to a photographic book. that I did. He said, now that makes a nice layout. He sort of flipped through it. He said, you stay out of sight and let your photographer win. He said, that's, that's, a, that's good that you've learned that. He said, Futura would have been a better font choice though. So I decided not to argue about fonts, and I, I remembered my friend Jeff's uh, suggestion that, uh, that I asked him about his decision. So I said, you know, I understand that you work primarily by yourself, so how do you get so much done? You know, you, you're doing work that's the same as, the, as big studios. And he said, well, I'm very direct with my clients. I tell them that, that I will give them exactly what they need, and it will be excellent, but that I don't change my work and I expect them to implement it exactly the way I give it to them. He said, if they want to dink around, let them hire somebody else. Um, and he said, that scares away the dilettantes, and, let, <laughs> and, and that way I can work faster. <laughs> that was his answer about it. So uh, you know, his aura started to sink in further. Uh, here's a guy whose designs are non-negotiable. 
one of the uh, last things he did in his career was the, the, the next logo for Steve Jobs. And if you've read the Steve Jobs biography, there's a little cameo appearance by Paul Rand in it that's having met Rand is, I find absolutely hysterical because for first Jobs calls up Rand, you know, he's, he knew about him because of his IBM work. So Steve Jobs calls up Rand and says, I want you to do something for me. And Rand says, I'm sorry, I work for IBM. I couldn't, it would be a conflict of interest. So Jobs being Jobs, you know, isn't going to take no for an answer. He goes to IBM, pulls some strings and comes back to Rand and says, well, I got it cleared. You can, you can work for me now. So they did this logo. And in the Jobs biography, there's this little paragraph about how uh, he's, he's done the business card for Next. And uh, Steve Jobs is quibbling with him over the placement of the period after his middle initial P. And I, th I thought, this is, you know, this is classic. These two giant egos, you know, are, there's a period in play and neither one's going to give up. <laughs> it's one of, one of the few cases we know of where Paul Rand backed down and let his customer participate in the design. <laughs>